So I want to tell you about what's happening uh, in France. Okay, just a few weeks ago, you had the presidential elections and Emmanuel Macron, who was the incumbent, he won a second term um, as president. And, you know, the way it works in France is you, you have a first round and then a runoff vote if no one gets a majority. And that's what happened, right? So in, in the runoff vote, in the second round, you had Macron versus Le Pen. So the neoliberal right versus the far right. And uh, Macron won. Now, here's what's happening. Because the left is posing a huge threat and a huge challenge to Macron. And I'm, ex I'm going to explain this to you right now. It's very interesting. Here are just the election results to jog your memory, okay? From the first round, you can see that the third place is Jean-Luc Mélenchon, okay? Look at the difference. So Mélenchon got 22% and Le Pen got 23.2%. So she barely beat him by 1%. So he could have very easily... Uh, run against Macron in the final um, in the final runoff, you know, and and you have to understand something. A lot of people voted uh, for Emmanuel Macron because in France they've been using the same tactic against Americans, right? Vote blue no matter who. Donald Trump is a fascist. You have to vote for Hillary Clinton to save democracy. You have to vote for Joe Biden to save democracy. So they they have the same kind of mantra going on there, right? You ha you have to vote for the neoliberal right to save us from the far right, like as if there's a huge difference between them. <laughs> same crap. Same crap. You can't fool us. But just this is ironic, right? That you can see these same kinds of trends in other countries, right? So my point here is that uh, people voted for uh, uh, for her. Uh, sorry, people voted for Emmanuel Macron just to get rid of Le Pen. My hunch, my hunch is that if the runoff vote had been between Macron and Mélenchon, uh, he would have lost. He would have lost. And I know you might be thinking, well, that's wishful thinking, because look at how Bernie Sanders did, and look how Jeremy Corbyn did. I don't think it's comparable. You know, um, Bernie Sanders and Jeremy Corbyn, uh, you, I, I understand why some people, they want to create sort of a connection between Mélenchon and Bernie Sanders and Jeremy Corbyn because they're, they're old socialists uh, that are popular with young voters. I get it. Yes, you, fine. They're not exactly the same. We cannot say they're one-to-one -one comparisons, but I, I get it. And um, the thing is, though, Bernie Sanders never stood a chance and Jeremy Corbyn never stood a chance. They, they are hated by their own party. Uh, they, you know, they are... Nowhere, getting nowhere near the same kinds of votes. Again, look at that, 22%. That is astronomical compared to Bernie Sanders and uh, uh, Corbyn in any of the votes that we're talking about, whether it's the primary um, and the generals and so on. Okay, that is very, very, very close. It's not even comparable. Um, so what they're doing right now, what Mélenchon is saying, he's saying the election is not over. And you might be going, what? What do you mean it's not over? The, they elected the president two weeks ago. It's done. It's two rounds and it's over. Mélenchon is saying there's a third round. And what does he mean by that? What, what's this third round? He's talking about the legislative elections next month in June. Okay? And he's playing <laughs> very, very, very interesting game. Because what he just did is actually, it, it's, it's incredible. This is what it's called. This is the Nouvelle Union Populaire Écologique et Sociale. I'm just going to call it NUPS or NUPES for short, okay? So I'm not going to say that all the time. Do you know what this is? He's basically taken his party, La France, uh, France Insoumise, and he's forged a coalition with the socialists, with the communists, and with the Green Party. The whole left, the whole French left is under one banner, during the legislative election next month. And they've agreed on a fixed program, which I'll show you in a second. And they've agreed on Mélenchon being the leader. So what does this mean? This means next month, Mélenchon could become the prime minister. And now you get to something very interesting in French politics, which is called cohabitation, cohabitation, where you have a president from one party and a prime minister from another party, two parties that are completely opposed. And you've only had this three times in French history, at least since the uh, Fifth Republic, so after 1958, okay? <laughs> and needless to say, Mélenchon could make Macron's life hell, really hell, because, you know, uh, after they did these reforms in the uh, very, very late 90s, ever since then, you've never had another cohabitation, because 
um, you know, both the, 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 the last prime minister and president to have a cohabitation, they realized this, this stuff sucks. It's really difficult and we don't like it and we're going to reform it so that it makes it easier not to have another cohabitation, but it's still technically possible. And so French presidents in the last 20 years, they become very used to having no problems doing whatever they like because the prime minister and the, um, the uh, Assemblée Nationale, so the, uh, what you could compare, I guess, to the uh, parliament in the UK or um, uh, a Congress in the US, th they, are, they are working together. They're from the same party. They're aligned. So life is much easier that way. But if you have somebody like Mélenchon, who is completely opposed to Macron, uh, who has a, a, a much more diverse program, a, an opposing program, that changes the whole equation. So that's what he means by let's do, you know, let's let's win next month because there's a third round in the election. And the fact that they've been able to pull together this coalition is ridiculous because to do that is already one thing. Like just to be able to put the Greens and the Communists and the Socialists all together is, is already quite a feat, honestly. Uh, but to do it in such a short period of time, in, in literally a few days after the election, that I've never heard or seen anything of that. N n this is really unprecedented. And also to agree on things like we, you, you will be the leader, Mélenchon will lead this, and we have these things that we want to implement in the program. That's quite a feat. And something else that people have pointed out, which is um, uh, uh, symbolic, is that they've done it almost on, on uh, the, the same anniversary that the Front Populaire was uh, founded. So uh, again, big, big, huge socialist movement in French history. Uh, that got them a lot of, you know, concessions and important things that, that people take for granted nowadays, you know, like the fixed working, um, uh, the fixed work week, uh, paid leave and so on, right? So uh, it also has a symbolic meaning that they did it almost on the, on the same anniversary date of that huge socialist movement. Um, and there are a bunch of memes popping up <laughs> for this new PES, and you can see the logos of all the parties put together here. So that's the, the Greens, Parti Communiste Français, the Communists, and so on. So... Let me uh, break this down uh, further for you. Um, here is a tweet from, uh, from Mélenchon himself, right? He says here, uh, we have done in 13 days what has never been achieved before in French political history. We, there's never been ever in our history an agreement um, of... Uh, an accord de candidature unique de toute la gauche. So um, basically, you know, a, a coalition um, of, of candidates under one banner on the left. And it's true. That's never happened. It's really, really quite impressive. And you know what they're trying to do now? They're trying to attack him. So <laughs> as soon as you have somebody from the left who starts to become sort of a threat to the new liberal establishment and the far right, then they start piling on you in the media. And... I'm going to play you a couple of clips here. I'm really sorry. I don't, I don't know if there's any uh, English subtitles, but I'll translate them for you. <laughs> this is François Hollande. So he was the president just a few years ago. He won in 2012, right? Yeah, so in spring 2012, and he was the president before Macron, uh, who's the incumbent right now. Um, and he, he's, saying, uh, he's saying this about Mélenchon. Let's, let's take a listen and I'll translate. He uh, says he won't be prime minister. Bien sûr que euh, euh, s'il devenait Premier ministre, il sait parfaitement que ce programme, celui que vous n'avez pas complètement détaillé, euh, serait irréalisable. Il fait tout ça pour être chef de l'opposition. So he's saying Mélenchon knows he's never going to be Prime Minister. He knows this, right? He knows that even if he becomes Prime Minister, he can never get this program, like his, his policies, uh, uh, adopted. It's never going to work. Have you, have you heard that before? I've heard this so many times. Bernie Sanders doesn't stand a chance. He can't get elected. He'll never get this through the Senate. You're always the same shit. Right? It's so funny. It's so funny seeing it in French. Il le fait pour être candidat de nouveau à l'élection présidentielle de 2027. Ah bon? Pourquoi le ferait-il? So now he's accusing Mélenchon of, of pulling this stunt next month uh, so that he can run in 2027. Wow. T'es marrant, toi. T'es drôle. I didn't even think of that. That's really funny. That's so hilarious. Like, like, no, the guy, he doesn't want to become the prime minister. He's just pretending so he can run in 2027. What the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> this is really funny. Ben oui, ben ouais, je vous donne la réponse. Et parce que et, et si on se retrouve déjà, c'était il y a 15 jours. Et, et, hein, et, et, le... et vous pensez pas que Marine Le Pen pense exactement? <laughs> She was telling him, are you like, are you serious? The the election was 15 days ago, and you're you're saying Mélenchon's already thinking about the next one in 2027. That's what she's implying. It's so pathetic, honestly. Uh, here, I want to show you Marine Le Pen herself. She is also uh, uh, trying to 
take shots at Mélenchon. Let's take a look at what, uh, what she has to say. La fable, euh, la fable de Jean-Luc Mélenchon opposant Emmanuel Macron a peut-être arrêté maintenant. Hein, ça a duré 15 jours, ça a fait rire tout le monde. Euh, la réalité, <laughs> c'est que Jean-Luc Mélenchon a fait élire Emmanuel Macron. Voilà. She, she, so, she, what she's saying is that the, the, the fable, the myth of uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, uh, you guys need to start cutting it out. This is over. It was funny for a few days. But Jean-Luc Jean Mélenchon got... Emmanuel Macron elected. That's what she's saying. Wow. <laughs> she's really funny. Donc ça le discrédite absolument pour pouvoir... She, yeah, so she's saying that he's been completely discredited. Absolument pour pouvoir euh, se mettre dans la posture de l'opposant à Emmanuel Macron. Yeah, so she's saying that Mélenchon is completely discredited and he has basically no right to, you know, portray himself as some kind of opposition figure to Macron. Donc il joue euh, les fous du roi, euh, il surjoue l'insolence à l'égard du président, et manifestement ils ont des rapports beaucoup plus euh, proches et beaucoup plus réguliers que ce qu'ils veulent bien montrer. Il a dit dernière que, question, il a dit une dernière que le rassemblement question. national ne servait à rien. Oui, bien entendu, mais encore une fois, il surjoue, euh, comme à chaque fois. Euh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon est un, un ancien... Euh, mais il a été longuement sénateur socialiste. On s'en débarrasse pas, on change pas les tâches d'un léopard. La fable... Euh... <laughs> she, she said that Mélenchon has been a, a, a socialist for a long time and a leopard doesn't change its spots. Um, well, he, I, I don't know what that even means because he's not... Mélenchon is not pretending to be anything else. So I don't know what that means. But basically she's saying that uh, uh, Macron and Mélenchon have a lot in common, that they're not really showing... I don't know what she's smoking. Like that's This is really funny because... From uh, the left's point of view, whether it's in the U.S. or the U.K. or in France, the far right and the neoliberals have a lot more in common uh, than anyone else, right? And that's why when people say, oh, well, you, if you vote for Biden, you're defeating fascism, uh, uh, you're defeating Trump, this, this sounds ridiculous because Biden and Trump, Democrats and Republicans, have a lot more in common uh, than, than anyone else. You know, people think Democrats are on the left. They're not on the left. They are right wing. They're absolutely right wing by, by anyone's standards. You know, if the Democratic Party, you took it and you put it in Europe, it would be classified as a right wing party, not left. If you put it in the UK, it's a right wing party, right? I say like UK as if it's outside of Europe. It is Europe, but you get my point. You take it anywhere outside of the US, it's a right wing party. So I don't see why people should view it any other way. They, these, these two are very, very closely aligned. And that goes for Marine Le Pen and Macron. People see them as very, very similar. And that's why... So many young people said they're not going to vote. They're not voting for either one of them, right? And then what, what happens next? Here we go. You know what's coming. Oh, you're handing the election to the far right. You are irresponsible. Da, 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 da. Where have you heard this before? You've heard this in the UK. You've heard this in the US. It's the same old playbook. They want to basically blame young people for not voting for the neoliberal establishment, whether it's the Democrats or the Labour Party or Emmanuel Macron uh, and, and uh, his gang. So it's the same old playbook, the exact same thing, but in French. And I, and I find this very interesting because you can relate it to what's happening in uh, other European countries and in the US. And a lot of you will know what I'm talking about because we've seen the same playbook with Bernie, with, with Corbyn and so on. Um, and uh, the only difference here is that Mélenchon, for all intents and purposes, got so, so bloody close uh, to the runoff vote. And uh, he is still very, very close um, to becoming prime minister, right? He's, he's very, um, he stands a very good chance. It's not alone. Again, I'm not saying alone that he is some kind of formidable, like unique guy. No, no, no. This is unique. La nouvelle union populaire, écologique et sociale. This is what is unique because this did not happen with Bernie Sanders. When Bernie Sanders lost, he didn't go and start campaigning and trying to make, you know, rally the left and do all of these kinds of things. On the contrary, he rolled over for the neoliberal establishment, right? Jeremy Corbyn, the same thing. This is the opposite of rolling over. This is, hey, the election is not over. We are going to keep fighting and we're going to make your life hell for the next five years by uh, getting elected um, in the Assemblée Nationale. Do you, do you see why this is so remarkable? And it's important to understand because a few weeks ago during the presidential election in France, People, including myself, I made the criticism that Mélenchon was so close, right? Look, look, Marine Le Pen only beat him by barely a percent. 
And the criticism that I made and other people made is that the, the uh, other candidates that are listed down here, they split the vote. So the Green Movement candidate, the Communist candidate, they, look, this, the Communist Party got 2.3%, or I, I should say Roussel got 2.3%. Imagine if he had uh, uh, thro thrown his support behind Mélenchon and given just half of that to Mélenchon. Mélenchon would have faced uh, against Macron in the runoff vote. And same with the Green parties and so on, right? So uh, now it's not every man for himself. On the contrary, it's let's all get together, the Communists, the Socialists, the Green Party, and go and make life hell for the neoliberal uh, establishment for Emmanuel Macron. And uh, again, something that people might not understand is that the French constitution is built in a way that um, the, the prime minister actually has a lot of power, right? Because most people think that, well, you know, you get elected prime minister and you do whatever you want, you're in control. No, it's not true. It, it's just been that most of the time, the uh, legislative elections go in the same direction as the presidential election. So you end up having a cohesion there. But the whole point of a cohabitation, a cohabitation is that the prime minister and the president are not from the same party. And that's why it's only happened three times since 1958. This is an article from Le Monde, which breaks things down quite well. Um, and uh, they say here that uh, from, so these are the three cohabitations you've had. It was from 86 to 88. Um, so François Mitterrand and Jacques Chirac. Okay, Mitterrand was uh, president and Jacques Chirac was prime minister. And so they were from opposing parties, right? Parti Socialiste and then RPR. And then the second time you had that was from 1993 to 95. So that was Mitterrand's second term and uh, he had to face off against Balladur. And then, of course, the last one was between 1997 and 2002 and that was between Chirac and Jospin. So very rare. It's not something you have all the time. Uh, but it is possible and it is important. And these legislative elections are next month, June 12th and June 19th. Um, and uh, this is why it's important to become the prime minister for Mélenchon. Look what you can do. According to the French constitution, the country's domestic politics are clearly entrusted to members of the government. Quote, the prime minister, not the president, the prime minister directs the action of the government, ensures the execution of laws, and is responsible for national defense. The government determines and conducts the policy of the nation and as the administration and the armed force at its disposal. Um, so this professor from um, Sorbonne, which is a very famous uh, French university, says, in the event of cohabitation, there is power clearly in the relationship between the prime minister and the Assemblée Nationale. And um, in these power-sharing situations, the president has more secondary role, okay? So Macron would have his powers regulated, uh, yeah? And so uh, Macron would appoint the prime minister of his choice. However, look at the, the clause. The prime minister must, however, have the confidence of the Assemblée. So uh, if uh, Mélenchon gets his way with, the, with Nupes, Macron will not have a choice, really. Um, and then, of course, these are the other things that the president can do. So he can dissolve the National Assembly. So this is a risk that, you know, in some, um, in some ways that even if the, uh, this new coalition, the NUPES, they actually win next month, technically speaking, at least once a year, the president can dissolve the National Assembly or l'Assemblée Nationale, and then you have to have new legislative elections all over again. Um, one thing that I'm not uh, clear on is if he can do that this year during the same year of where you've already had one. But certainly next year he could do that, and then every year, uh, once a year. So uh, that's also one thing, but uh, I think he'd be very, very, very stupid to do that uh, because it would backfire, I think, very, very largely on him. Um, so again, there's a clear power-sharing role, right? So uh, they talk about the armed forces, okay, national defense. This is very clearly outlined as being... Uh, under the, the domain of the prime minister and the administration. But it also talks about the head of state being the guarantor of national independence and the integrity of the national territory and the head of the armies. So it's kind of like in the United States, you know, it says that the president is the commander in chief. Okay, so he's the head of the armed forces. But, but the Congress is also mentioned in the US Constitution as having an important role to play when it comes to the armed forces and especially with declaring war. And that was made all the more clear, as we were just talking about earlier, with the 1973 War Powers Resolution. So 
you, you, you see that there is a power sharing uh, responsibility, even though you don't actually see it in practice in the US. Be why? Because <laughs> no matter who is elected, Republicans and Democrats, they are playing on the same team. So the policy never changes. But here in France, things would look a bit different because the, the provisions are in the Constitution and Mélenchon is no friend of Macron. <laughs> so um, you see similarities also with the nuclear codes, right? Only the president has those. But still, um, it's, it's, uh, there is a real power sharing role here. And I'm, I'm very excited to see what happens. Um, I think this is huge because, again, if you're interested in um, what happened with Bernie Sanders, right? If you followed his campaign um, or Jeremy Corbyn in 2019, uh, you understand the, the, the games that they've been playing, right? You understand that um, they screw young voters and they screw leftists and they say that they're enabling fascism if they don't vote for the neoliberal candidate and, and all of these sorts of things, right? And they're trying the same tactics now, but Instead of, you know, uh, Mélenchon rolling over, we're having the opposite, actually. The whole left is, is mobilizing uh, to, uh, to combat the results of the election and actually uh, gain a, you know, get a foot in the day. So I, he, he's basically talking about how it's been established in, the French, uh, in French law since 2003 that you, when you go into retirement, your pension cannot be lower than 85% of... Um, uh, le SMIC, uh, th which is basically the, the equivalent of um, the minimum wage, right? So uh, uh, what the hell was it? Salaire minimum interprofessionnel de croissance. It's a huge word. It just means minimum wage. So his point is that this has been the law since 2003 and no president, no government since then has actually applied this. So they've been screwing pensioners out of their money, right? Um, and He's saying that this is the law, and the moment that he gets in government, he is going to apply that, right? Because this, this is, again, something funny, right? They come to Bernie Sanders, they come to Corbyn, they come to Mélenchon with, like, these, these questions, like, like, how dare you do these, <laughs> like, very basic, nice things for people, like, you know, like, not screwing pensioners. How dare you? They make it sound so fucking controversial. Like, it's the law. It, it's literally the law. And the governments have not been imply, applying it. And they act like it's some weird, bizarre idea. It's so condescending, you know? And I watched this interview yesterday. I watched the whole thing as a whole hour. And they even asked him something like, why, why didn't you condemn uh, Russia in 2014 w with Crimea? Right? Because he, he was condemning Russia now. Uh, but he also said he's in favor of de-escalation, right? He's made that very clear. Like he said, sending weapons is not, as, is not diplomacy or, or de-escalation. It's the opposite. And then they're like, why didn't you condemn Russia in 2014? And he's like, look, you are either deaf or you don't, or don't remember anything because that's what I did. Like, it's so funny. They're trying to do these gotcha moments with him. It's, it's really it's so typical. When you see it, when you've seen it in the British and the American media, you, you start picking up on these things, how they try to like do these uh, gotchas every second with, uh, with especially the left ones. Now, don't get me wrong. They're journalists. It's their job to ask tough questions. Fine, I understand. But they do it. You know, the, the, the proportion, the ratio at which they do it to people like Mélenchon, it, it, it vastly, vastly outnumbers what they would ask to Macron and, and Le Pen and so on, right? So that, that's something interesting to, <laughs> to, to pick up on. Um, and um, let me just look up one second because I, 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 I'm kind of annoyed. I had this whole uh, program li listed here. And... Uh, Okay, just a moment, and I'll look this up for you. It, it, it won't show up for some reason. I had their whole program up on the screen so I could read, read it to you directly. And um, I must have closed it out, so hold on. Because um, I was just talking about uh, the, the pension, right? But uh, there are other things, of course. Um, here we go. So 
these are some of the things that the whole coalition are trying to put into place, right? So the NUPES, as it's called. Um, so they want to raise the minimum wage to 1,400 euros uh, net, okay? And they want to lower the retirement age to 60. Le blocage des prix sur les produits de première nécessité. So basically that means putting a cap on prices for basic necessities. Uh, la planification écologique, so action on climate change, l'instauration d'une sixième république. Remember, uh, France has gone through numerous republics. What that means is they, they basically write a brand new constitution, okay? Right now, France is in its fifth republic since 1958. Charles de Gaulle, the, the French general um, from World War II, right? He, uh, the famous resistance figure and president, he basically came up with the fifth, um, uh, or, or shall we say, created the fifth republic, right? And um, as they say very clearly, cette coalition a l'ambition d'obtenir une majorité de l'Assemblée nationale afin d'imposer une cohabitation au président Macron, de faire nommer Jean-Luc Mélenchon comme premier ministre. So this, the goal of this coalition the, between Greens, Socialists, Communists, is to get a, get a majority in the National Assembly in order to put in place a cohabitation with Emmanuel Macron, the president, and to uh, get Jean-Luc Mélenchon elected as prime minister, and to put in place uh, un programme commun largement basé sur l'avenir en commun, programme mis en avant par la France insoumise depuis les scrutins de 2017. So, to put in place a common program largely based on the principles laid out by la France insoumise. La France insoumise is... is Jean-Luc Mélenchon's party. It means the insubmissive France. If, if that's, that's sort of a literal translation, but there you go. And some of the things that I, that I told you, you know, raising the minimum wage, the action on climate change, these are the things that they've all agreed on, okay? And that's very important because it's really difficult to get the left to come together and agree on something and in such a short period of time. That is remarkable and unparalleled, not just in French history, but I don't think you're seeing anything of that caliber in the UK, nor in the US, and that's why it deserves recognition and very close observation, and I'll be keeping my eye out for all these developments and what takes place next month during the French legislative elections.